Something pretty incredible has been happening in the Fallout 4 modding scene over the past couple of months. With the development of Fallout 4, there's quite a bit of content in the way of features that didn't make it into the game. Some of the stuff just got to conceptual stages, some of the stuff is somewhat in the game but never fully implemented, or even there's some content that was just a part or a fundamental feature in past Fallouts that was passed up on when it came to Fallout 4. Well, we have been getting a ton in the way of mods to implement some of this content. So in this video, I want to highlight some of those for you. Re-implementing cut content, bringing features that were staples of New Vegas and Fallout 3 into Fallout 4, and even just some mods that were concept art but never fully got made but now are finally here. Making videos like these are a ton of fun, the what ifs of Fallout 4 getting answered by modders. But moving on to the mods themselves, let's first take a look at classic holstered weapon system, and this is a big one. A recent new release for Fallout 4 as a part of the Fallout 4 New Vegas project, but in general, I want to give this mod author, whose name I tried and cannot pronounce, can't even get close to pronouncing, a huge shout out as several of their mods will be featured in this video and they're very special mods. So put simply, what we have with the classic holstered weapon system is the holstered weapon system we had in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, wherein if you had a weapon and then you put it away, it would holster on your hip or on your back. And the crazy part about this particular mod is it just works. The mod author in the description describes how it isn't magic, but it really does feel like magic using this one. It fully works with every single weapon in Fallout 4, and whatever weapon mods you have attached to it will show up on your back or on your hip. Technically, by default, some of the heavy weapons are disabled because they clip too much, but you can enable them. And even further, there are some customization options to change the exact seating on your back or your hip, so if you want to adjust it for spacing. But this mod gets even better as it also applies to all of the various NPCs you could find in the Commonwealth. And this is where I think it feels particularly special. I know I for one don't tend to play in third person, but walking through some of the cities or just walking around the game in general and seeing NPCs pack by and what kind of weapons they're carrying on them is pretty cool. It's one of those things that if someone described it to me, I wouldn't think too much of it, but seeing it for myself in the game, this is one of those mods that became a must download. And if all of that wasn't enough, it gets even better because it also has out of the box support for basically every weapon mod. You download your favorite weapon mod, you holster it, and it appears on your back. It literally just works. There are no other steps, no other customization or functionality you have to toy with. Now, of course, when it comes to certain armors, if you don't want it to clip through certain armors or like backpacks, that is something you'll have to mess with. But via console commands or editing some of the I and I files, you can get things exactly perfect. But for me, right off the bat, I think it's good enough in 95% of cases. You do see the occasional clipping, especially with some heavier armors, but in general, I love this mod. It's one of those staple features of past Fallouts that many have attempted to bring to Fallout 4, but this is the first time somebody just got it right. It's one of the first times it just works. But from the same mod author, actually an older mod that I feel like everyone just kind of forgot about because it is two years old now, but you deserve to be reminded of is the damage threshold framework, which put simply returns damage threshold as a defense style into Fallout 4. In Fallout 4 by default, what you have is damage resistance. You've definitely seen this looking at weapons, looking at armor types, and effectively the way this works is, depending on how high your damage resistance is and how much incoming damage there is, that damage will be reduced by a certain percent. This is unique in that it's not just how high your damage resistance is though, it also takes into account how much damage the enemy NPC is dealing to you. I put simply the takeaway is, no matter what weapon the enemy is using, it'll hurt you. So even at astronomical levels, enemies that have pretty good weapons can still do a decent amount of damage to you. Conversely, with the damage threshold system, it makes it so if enemies have a certain damage threshold and you're using a low caliber round, and also a low caliber round that isn't armor piercing, you'll basically have a pea shooter. Just compare here in vanilla Fallout 4 versus with this mod. As I attack this Brotherhood soldier, I do significantly more damage in vanilla Fallout 4 because I'm not really piercing through his damage threshold. And overall, what this does is it makes it so if you do have very heavy armor or you're going up against enemies with very heavy armor and you're not piercing that armor, you'll notice. Sometimes you'll be in combat and you'll be able to two shot one enemy, but then the next one it's taking a lot longer because they do have a higher damage threshold and you'll have an icon pop up on screen if you're not piercing them. And this makes it so you have more times so you're going to want to rely on either a higher caliber round or even 
armor piercing rounds, which are otherwise something you kind of could just ignore in Fallout 4 large in part, because if you're doing a lot of damage, you're mostly going to be okay. One of the pretty cool parts about this mod also is it does have a patch, so it will just apply to everything. Apply to the vanilla weapons, apply to armors and weapon mods, so you download two things and your entire game will be overhauled. It definitely makes things harder at times, but in general, I think it makes things more fun because you have to plan a bit more and be equipped appropriately for different situations. And you can also use a super hardcore hybrid mode where it'll apply both damage threshold and damage resistance. So enemies become quite tanky if you want to go that route. But okay, we have a lot of ways now to change up your weapons. How about some just new weapons to use with these new systems? Well, one of the first ones, and this is a long time coming, is the 10 millimeter SMG. And I feel like this will end up being the definitive 10mm SMG mod for Fallout 4. This of course was a staple in both Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and even kind of in Fallout 76, although I feel like that's an abomination when you look at the old versions. But finally now we do have a very well made 10mm SMG mod for Fallout 4. It features a variety of custom attachments and it's a true to form recreation of the 10mm SMG. It looks exactly like it did in past games, a few tweaks, in particular with this one, the barrel attachments that are added with it are just cool, very fitting for the weapon overall, but also stand out. They're not just traditional tactical stuff, but feel pretty Fallout. One of the faults with this one is it technically doesn't have custom and personal made animations for it, except there's actually already a mod adding custom animations onto this one, which I think look much better than the vanilla option. And really just overall, it's finally here. A definitive option when it comes to the 10 millimeter SMG in Fallout 4, one that's balanced appropriately will integrate into the level list so you'll see enemies shooting this thing at you. But fortunately, we got another what I would describe as a white whale when it comes to Fallout 4 weapon mods, and that is with the cowboy repeater. There of course have been lever actions before, but this is a real definitive one that just released a couple of weeks ago. It of course adds in the iconic cowboy repeater from Fallout New Vegas into Fallout 4, and really it's just great. One of the best parts about this, it does have several different ammo types to it, each with different pros and cons to them. Otherwise, it does come with several different customization options, both visually and in some of the attachments. This scope in particular, I just kind of find hilarious because of its length, but otherwise it is the cowboy repeater in its full glory in Fallout 4. And I feel like repeaters like this are just immensely satisfying to use, getting those one shots off on enemies to easily and quickly take them down. Although this too has a fault. As by default, when you reload this one, you're going to have to reload all 12 shots or 8 shots depending on which mods you use. Except we do have a solution for that with the bullet counted reload system. This is another older mod for Fallout 4 that I feel like people just don't pay enough attention to and it comes from our same favorite mod author whose name I still can't pronounce. If you're not familiar with the bullet counted reload system, it implements that system that we had in past Fallouts and even now do have in Fallout 76 where if you shoot once and you reload, you'll just put one bullet back in. You know, kind of like the way it probably should have always worked. By default, it acts as a framework, so other mods have to build on top of it, only including functionality for the lever action rifle. Fortunately, the Cowboy Repeater mod does include this functionality with an optional file download. And even further, there are several file downloads you can get from bullet counted reload patches that bring this functionality to several of what are hopefully your favorite Fallout 4 weapon mods, including several other mods that appeared in past Fallout games, but didn't quite make it into Fallout 4 by default, except modders did bring them back. This additional functionality makes them immensely more satisfying and just fun to use. And although that reload aspect is at first glance one of the most appealing parts of this, where it really comes in handy is canceling reloads. So if you're halfway through a reload and then have an enemy pop up, you can pause it and start firing with these shots you already put in the weapon. No longer will you have to go through the entire animation again, which is an immensely frustrating aspect of vanilla Fallout 4. So that was a ton of content that appeared in past games and Bethesda didn't quite bring it to Fallout 4. But what about just some good old fashioned cut content? So one of the very simple ones that's actually like 80, 70% implemented already in the game is actually a whole secondary section of the Museum of Freedom. Right now in game, there's technically a false wall in the Museum of Freedom. And if you just fly behind it by using console commands, you'll see, oh, there's actually a whole other room there and in fact, several additional rooms on the other side. So the Museum of Freedom Cut Content Restored mod will bring this back and actually flesh it out, finalize it so it does work in Fallout 4, add in some enemies as well as loot. And I really like this one because the Museum of Freedom is one of those places that I almost 
always go to in a playthrough. It's kind of just something you can avoid if you're trying to do the main quest. So having it look and be different, but different in a way that Bethesda almost intended is pretty cool. It's not totally different, but does give you a few additional avenues for getting up to the top half of the building and a lot more to explore and loot. And actually a mod by the same mod author that doesn't totally fit in with this video, but I'm going to include it anyway, is Concord Revised, which just recently got some additional updates. What this will do is add in several interior locations all throughout Concord. There's several other mods that do this, but I feel like this one is just not getting nearly as much attention as some of those other ones, despite being really cool. So now as you're going through Concord, several of the buildings that were previously just boarded up actually have interiors, including a bit of a metro station that is inhabited by raiders. In fact, nearly all of these buildings are inhabited with raiders with little pieces of lore throughout. And a lot of the environmental design this mod author brought with this is pretty interesting and very raider-esque. It just makes Concord as a town overall a bit more interesting and have a bit more depth to it. And it also makes the Museum of Freedom a functional settlement. Another very simple one that is in the files of the game is the Trapper Helmet. By default, there of course is a different Trapper Helmet in Fallout 4, but it seems like Bethesda actually went through iterations of this as a totally separate one that I think actually matches the overall Trapper armor quite a bit better is also in the files. It seems like it was basically done, just never properly implemented into the game, but this mod will turn it on and even further make it so some Trappers have a small chance at spawning with this one. It's pretty cool. I think the design of the helmet overall is pretty nice. It's a better way to complete the Trapper armor outfit if you're going for that look, but otherwise a pretty simple one. Although a recent release from the Fallout 3 remake mod that with the Fallout 4 Capital Wasteland project is the Pip-Boy 3000A. This is a recreation of the iconic Pip-Boy that appeared in Fallout 3 and it adds it into Fallout 4 as an optional Pip-Boy replacement mod. Right off the bat, it does have some custom animations as you switch through things, tune the radio stations, but even further features several customization options as far as the color customization goes. One of those features added in by Creation Club it's a relatively simple one, but I think a pretty cool one. And if you're looking to feel nostalgic or just think about Fallout 3 with some of these other mods, it definitely is another good addition. And frankly, anything to get away from the Vanilla Pip-Boy is a win by me. I haven't actually used the Vanilla Pip-Boy in like three, four years now. One that I feel like is not getting nearly enough tension is Cranky. In Fallout 4 right now, there are a wide variety of mods that add in concept art weapons and armors. One of the most popular were the handmade shotguns. We have these both as free mods available for the game, but also even in Creation Club. And despite there being several options for both of those styles, one that never was added, at least as far as I can tell, was this particular style. By default, it of course looks pretty normal, it's just a four-shot shotgun. Nothing super crazy there. It has some basic customization options, but where this one becomes particularly special and to me stands out from the others is when you actually shoot it in first person. As you can see, it has a very unique way of cycling through these shots where you are literally cranking from one shot to the next. So this again is basically a direct one-to-one -one recreation of that concept art. And I think just overall looks and plays really cool. It functions really well as an earlier game shotgun. And to me, it feels very Fallout, a lot more unique, a lot more interesting than something like a boring double barrel shotgun, despite it functionally having a lot of similarities. And even though a lot of those other handmade shotgun mods are good, I think this is by far the most unique while also maintaining a handmade style. And is too another one that will be integrated into the level list so you could find it on enemies. But then another mod that has been out for a while but I feel like you just need a reminder on is the MP40. The MP40 is a weapon to appear in some of the OG Fallout so it is a lore friendly addition to the game. And with this MP40 mod, you get the traditional style World War II MP40. It takes full advantage of Fallout 4's customization system so you could really change how it looks but it also comes with basically a tactical version where you basically can convert it into a Fallout 4 tactical mod like many of those alternative modern military mods. And I just love this. I think having this dichotomy, the two separate variants here is very unique and very cool, a much more interesting way of implementing an otherwise familiar weapon. But it doesn't actually stop there as there's a third experimental option, which is functionally two MP40s stuck together that almost acts as an LMG. Altogether, I know this is one some of you may have seen in the past, but between the animation, sounds, and of course the customization, it still really holds up as a top tier weapon mod today, even though it is three years old now. And if you are looking for some lore friendly weapons and just need an additional incentive to download this one, here is your additional incentive. But then one that is a bit more unique or different is hot 
Diggity. This is going to be another skill replacement mod for Fallout 4 using the Level Up Menu EX framework. For the reason I like this particular one, outside of the mod author just being awesome, is that it feels very much so like a hybrid between what we had in New Vegas and Fallout 3 with skills, perks, and special, but also taking some liberties or making some enhancements with new and unique perks unique for Fallout 4. It's not just trying to adapt Fallout 4's system, it's going a bit beyond that. It does have some of the classic old school stuff, like having different traits on your character, tagging certain skills so they're immediately at a higher level, and then of course you do have the split of set skills that do advance certain things, and then a variety of perks, these having requirements as far as your special stat, as far as how high your skill is, and of course your level overall. So it gives you a lot of different ways to build in Fallout 4, and in particular the functionality so you can min-max or you could just not min-max max if you don't want to, but again some of those more unique or different perks, such as criticals will work outside of that, you could just land criticals in regular combat, or even some older perks from past Fallout games getting re-implemented into Fallout 4. It's a good one to download for your next playthrough and just have on in the background as it has quickly become one of my favorite skill and perk overhaul mods available now, but isn't getting the recognition it deserves. And then last but not least, we have a very, very simple one, another piece of cut content for Fallout 4, and that is the Robot Meat Brain. Originally with the Automatron DLC for Fallout 4, but that's the head plan so that when you actually took down a Robo Brain, they would drop an edible brain sometimes. This edible brain giving you plus two intelligence, but minus one to endurance. And this mod is rather simple, it'll add that functionality back into Fallout 4, so as you're fighting Robo Brains, they have a chance at dropping this. Kind of a silly one, but also I just liked this mod, I thought it was a cool addition. But overall, that's large in part going to wrap it up for this one. A lot of content to improve your game in various ways, but nearly all of it being planned features, cut content, or even past features that we saw in other Fallouts. Hopefully you guys found this video informative, but until next time, I thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you all later.